we have some important updates regarding the $10,000 EIDL grant. My name is Max Maher, and this is News That Makes You Money, or NTMYM for short. That's, that's no shorter. But anyways, this the EIDL grant and the EIDL loan program is pretty darn confusing. And because of that, I have a contact at the SBA at high level within disaster assistance at the SBA who has been assisting me and this channel help navigate these programs whenever there's anything we come across that just simply doesn't make sense and we need more guidance on. And they have been extremely helpful in my most recent like five or six videos on the grant program. It has illuminated literally hundreds of thousands of people as to what to expect with these programs. Now in my last video, I proposed that if you have any questions regarding the EIDL grant or loan process and it hasn't been addressed anywhere, let me know in the comments and I will ask the SBA administrator and we will get some answers to those questions. And there was four questions that really stood out as to things that simply aren't addressed anywhere. I'm curious about them and I think it would help a large majority of people. Now, the first question here is if someone received the EIDL loan in 2020, however, they didn't check the box to be considered for the EIDL advance, will they be invited to apply for the targeted advance? Now, I know with this issue, many people applied for the loan, which is also the application for the EIDL grant. Last year, they applied. However, they never received the grant, so they're just not sure if they ever check the box or not, because if you don't check that box for the grant, you just don't receive the grant. But also we ran out of funding for this program. So we don't know, did you forget to check the box or just was there no funding? And because of that, are those people going to also receive the email invite for the grant program? So that was one great question. Second question, many people are saying that the SBA has called them to verify information on the EIDL targeted advance. Is this a legitimate process? If it's legitimate, is there anything an individual can do to verify that it's actually the SBA calling them? I'm always extremely concerned about just scammers in general, especially over the phone. It's very easy for someone to pose as the SBA or, or whoever, and then try to redirect you to a malicious URL or you know do something shady. So I really wanted to know if this was legitimate because I haven't seen this written anywhere on the SBA, but I've heard anecdotally of people talking about it. Next question that I thought was really good probably the most important question here many people are worried that their targeted advance email was never sent or didn't reach them will there eventually be a process for individuals who applied for the eidl grant before december 27th that the current cutoff this program is likely set to open again sometime within the next month and we will absolutely have more videos on that in the future as well so make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell that way you don't miss anything regarding this grant program because this channel is literally the first to get all of this information and uh, we've, we've kind of been knocking it out of the park if, if we're being honest if I, if I want to go ahead and pat myself on the back but I, I won't do that <laughs> but uh, anyways is there any way for people to make sure that the email was actually sent or see if it was sent is there any way to do that that, that's an amazing question and we have an answer there. And then the fourth question, what documents are required to prove a change in address for the targeted EIDL? Like if you had a business address and due to COVID you had to leave that business or for whatever reason you've moved, how do you certify that new address, especially if that new address is in a targeted area, which means you can get that $10,000 grant. So this is a very important question. I know I've received this question many times and we have an answer to it. So starting off with the first question, if someone received the EIDL loan in 2020, however, they didn't check the box to be considered for the EIDL advance, will they be invited to apply for the targeted advance? If they didn't check that box, are they gonna be invited? The answer here is yes, they will still receive an invite to apply for the targeted EIDL advance. That in itself is huge. I'm glad to hear that. The invites are not based on whether the applicant business checked the advance box or not when they first applied. So basically, if you applied for the loan, you are in queue for the targeted advance. You may not have received the email quite yet, but you are absolutely in queue and eventually you'll receive that email. And I'm assuming that everyone is going to receive that email. I don't, I, I should probably verify this, but it seems like everyone will receive that email within the next month or so because they're going to send out all those emails and then they're going to likely open the program to anyone who hasn't applied. But before they open it, they have to make sure that everyone who's already applied has a chance. So it would make logical sense that they'll have those all sent out within the next month or so. I should probably verify that as well. Maybe that'll be on my next EIDL update. Second question. 
Many people are saying that the SBA has called them to verify information on the EIDL targeted advance. Is this a legitimate process? If it's legitimate, is there anything an individual can do to verify it's actually the SBA calling, not some scammer? And surprisingly, yes, this is legitimate. I actually expected this this answer to be no. The call will likely come from our disaster loan processing center and will be recognized by the number 1-800-366-6303. So if you want to write that number down, 1-800-366-6303, or you can just screenshot this. And then if you get a call, you can compare it to the screenshot or however you want to do that. The SBA representative that calls will ask to confirm certain information to make sure that they are speaking with the legitimate, legitimate applicant, which is you. I don't know why I just started like four times in a row. But anyways, you could, you could also ask the SBA representative to confirm something from the application, like the application number, your birthday, the last four digits of your social security number, the property address, or approved loan info. I probably wouldn't do the birthday or the property address because that could be information that could be you know gathered somewhere else. Loan information, of course, the SBA is gonna be the only person to have that. Social security number, hopefully not very many people have the last four digits of your social security number. Application number, that's probably the best one to go with. Like when, when they call and just say, hey, can you go ahead and just verify the application number for me? That way you know it's legitimate because they're not gonna be able to guess, you know, the scammer's not gonna be able to guess the application number. The SBA rep representative may be a little surprised if you ask, but you're just gonna sound, you know, like a genius uh, <laughs> verifying that this is true. We encourage applicants and borrowers to be vigilant and take precautions to protect, protect themselves against fraud and identity theft. There are a lot of fraud schemes circulating out there. There really are. Like I've seen emails that are like pinching scams. I've seen postcards that are complete scams. So be careful with this. Verify the number. And I would strongly recommend asking a piece of information like your, your loan number or something like that when you do get that call. Third question. This is probably the most important question of the bunch. Many people are worried that your email wasn't sent or you didn't receive it like just for whatever reason it, it got lost somewhere between the sba and you is there going to be a process for individuals who applied for the eidl grant before december 27th to find their targeted advance portal if they never received that or they can't find the invite email and the answer here is yes i'm very excited to say yes to this you're going to be able to check and see if that email was actually sent to you. So customer service is able to confirm a business if they were sent the email invite to apply for the targeted EIDL advance and which email address they have on record. So they're gonna be able to, to confirm the email, you're gonna to have to know the email, but they'll be able to confirm which one it got sent to and if that email was sent. This is because the system generates a note in the file that the SBA representatives can view if that email was actually sent. So they're gonna be, be able to say a yay or nay. You're probably gonna to have to wait through some significant wait times in order to get through, but if you absolutely absolutely need to know the answer or if you're for whatever reason thinking I should have received this email already it might be worth giving them a call now it says the targeted EIDL advance will only be accessible through the direct email invite now I suspect that's because every single person has their own unique URL for their portal there's no like one URL to go through through every single application or portal that's probably why it has to be the email invite but luckily they're able to you know verify that's been sent or probably resend it if, if it's the same email. Unfortunately, customer service agents cannot confirm though when an email invite for the targeted EIDL advance will be sent. We're hoping that everyone gets that within the next month or so, but again, I need to verify that. Only if that email was already sent by the system can they verify it. So if you absolutely need to know, I would say give them a call. If you're able to wait a little bit longer, you, you might as well just wait if you don't wanna you know, sit on hold for a long period of time. Number four, fourth question. What documents are required to prove a change in address for the targeted EIDL? I've talked to so many people who've had a change in address, their business is closed down for whatever reason, they moved from what wouldn't be a low income area to now low income area and that's how you get the grant. That's one of the criteria. So the answer is the required documents could vary depending on the type of business applicant and when the change of address occurred. But some examples of documents that, that the SBA may request include, but are not limited to a copy of a lease, a utility bill, bill a warranty deed, or any other proof of address. They may also call to confirm or check online sources to validate a change of business address. So as long as you have proof of that address of some kind, or at least multiple kinds probably, you should be good to go as far as changing that address. But we do know from the past that there will likely be additional checks, security checks for those who do change their address because 
they don't want anyone you know working the system here if they aren't actually eligible with the low income census tract the reduction in revenue of 30 percent or more on an eight week to eight week basis and 300 or fewer employees so there was a lot of clarifications given here i'm so thankful for the sba to help out me understand you know help me understand this this program a little bit better and then I can help you understand this program a little bit better so make sure you like this video if you enjoy this kind of content if you have any additional questions feel free to ask them below if they haven't been addressed anywhere else make sure you subscribe grab a free stock with the link in the description grab some free crypto with the link in the description do all the things I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope you have a profitable day